Implicit modeling is used to construct three-dimensional representations of the subsurface by employing mathematical algorithms. Unlike explicit modeling, where interpretation can be defined or adjusted manually, in the implicit method, it is the rules and constraints that define and guide the interpolation and extrapolation when data is not available. When we understand the functions of the algorithms we use, such workflows can not only produce results swiftly but also accurately. In this short episode, I will introduce some of the interpolation methods that are available also in QGS. Before diving into more sophisticated interpolation, we will start with inverse distance weighting, a simple interpolation technique widely used for producing quick and preliminary surfaces. IDW first calculates the distance between each location and all the data points. Then it estimates the interpolated value for this location based on the value and influence of each point. The weighting function expressed as power or p determines the rate at which the influence of the points diminishes with distance. In QGS this function is adjusted as distance coefficient p, with lower values resulting in reduced influence of data points and more even distribution. When data points are clustered or unevenly distributed like in my case the results may be unrealistic. With higher p-values the interpolation surface can be blocky or jagged due to the direct influence of individual data points, resulting in a lack of smoothness. Adjusting interpolation parameters will result in a smooth rolling surface. Nevertheless, IDW is affected by data distribution. Additionally, it is worth noting that it does not consider spatial trends or patterns present in the data, which results in the assumption that extreme data values will define the highest and lowest points in the topography, which rarely happens to be true. When data is scattered or irregularly spaced but the coverage is relatively good, like for example with LiDAR or 3D seismic interpretation, we can consider triangulated irregular network. TIN starts by constructing a network of non-overlapping triangles between the data points. Each triangle has three vertices with a signed value to each vertex. The interpolation within the triangles is typically linear meaning that each of them is inclined at a different angle and direction. In QGIS what is displayed as TIN raster are however pixels representing values of interpolated parameter. As you can see in this image, the linear interpolation within triangles does not handle topography well when represented by sparse data points. This algorithm also does not have built-in mechanisms to eliminate noisy data or outliers. In areas with sharp changes in elevation or abrupt transitions between data points, TIN might produce unrealistic surface representations. In addition, creating and working with TINs may require significant memory resources, especially for large datasets. As you may expect from this image, TIN interpolation is, however, particularly useful for modeling sharp tectonic structures. This application is explored in other episodes. With few data points and smooth, relatively flat topography, thin plate spline, TPS, may be a good interpolation option. This method can be imagined as fitting an elastic flat surface over the data points. The algorithm aims to minimize the bending of the surface while ensuring that it matches the data points at their locations. Besides the interpolated attribute, the parameters that should be specified are the extent of the target grid and resolution or cell size. Another parameter is the regularization that controls the trade-off between fitting the interpolation to the data points and minimizing the bending energy of the resulting surface. A higher value places more emphasis on smoothing the surface and reducing the bending energy, while lower values give more weight to fitting the data points with more flexibility to follow them. Similarly, a larger value of the search range will include more data points in the interpolation, which will also result in a more flexible interpolation with more local variation. The interpolated surface is forced to pass through these data points, while away from them it should deviate as little as possible from a flat surface, producing a smooth and continuous topography ideal for creating visually appealing representations. 
The algorithm is suitable for smaller datasets or when smoothness is a primary concern. What sets this method apart from two previous ones is that here data points do not define the amplitudes in topography, which can be valuable when working with geological boundaries. However, this interpolation method may be computationally intensive, especially for large datasets. Because it complies to data points, it is also sensitive to outliers or noise. We will continue to explore interpolation methods available with QGIS and other software. Thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this short introduction to interpolation in implicit modeling. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe, and I hope to see you in the next video.